always like to look for the positives in things. So today it's chucking it down with rain, but I don't have to worry about getting my hair wet. That's a positive. I've been given a Tesla Model S P85D to play with today. The roads are soaking, but that hasn't detracted from the fact that even though I might not be able to play with insanity mode, there's an awful lot in this car to talk about and I'm very, very excited to be driving it today. Morning, and I just thought I'd grab a quick opportunity, break in the rain here to have a look at the outside of this car. Uh, this is the P85D. P is performance, 85 is the battery size, 85 kilowatt hours, and D is dual, dual motor. This has got a, a motor in the front and a motor in the rear. More about all that later. Let's look at the outside of this car. So what we see is a, a, a car that, well, it's been about for a good few years now, hasn't it? This is Tesla. This is the, the pinnacle of the electric car world. This is what all other electric car makers are striving towards, is it not? They started off with a, a clear mantra that they wanted to change the world. They wanted to change everything that um, happens as far as public transportation is concerned, how we get from A to B and the vehicles we use. What they did was come up with some very, very nice cars and the Model S was the vehicle that they put onto the road, first of all, in order to I guess show off their brand and show what they could do in a way that was perhaps not affordable to everyone at the time, but it was obtainable to some people. Not only have they brought a new brand, but they brought a new ethos to a, an industry that, well, it was prehistoric in many senses of the word. And gone is all the secrecy and trying to hide how they develop these cars. This is all open source. This is available for people to see and use wherever they, they want to. So what is different about this car? Well. First glance, probably not an awful lot. It's a very nice looking car, there's no doubt about it. And as they say, you can't judge a book by its cover because although this looks quite traditional, actually underneath it's very, very different. So let's just look around the outside. It, it is a nice looking car, paint and everything on it. It looks very, very good. I know again, there were some issues early on. Uh, this one's running on 19 inch wheels. You can get bigger wheels, but my understanding is the ride's not as nice in it. Yeah, okay, it might be a bit more grippy and it certainly looks an awful lot better with the big wheels, but um, the 19 inch wheels are the, the wheel that most people like to, to run their cars on because it's more comfortable. At the front we see, well, more of that kind of traditional looking car. Yes, it's very, very sleek. We see the bonnet goes straight up into the windscreen. Uh, very, very low drag coefficient on this car. The only clue we start to get that this is a little bit different is uh, if we take the keys out, give it a double click on the front and lift the bonnet. And what we've got there is a frunk. I don't like calling it a frunk. That sounds very American to me. I'm British. Uh, it's a boot in the front. It's a, it's a storage area. It's, um, there's no engine there. Now, if you don't have the D model, you get a little bit more room, but because it's D, because it's got a, a motor in the front, we've got this little hump here that, um, that just it eats into the space a little bit. As we walk back along the side of the car, one of the things I do like about it is the, the door handles. They're flush against the, the body of the door. Uh, that helps with the, dr the uh, drag coefficient, but um, generally, if you walk up to the car with your key in your pocket, it will open for you. But because I've been in and around it, locking it and things, it's not doing it. But in order to open it, if it doesn't do it automatically, touch the door handle and it presents itself. Wing mirror comes out and um, it's not a mechanical door handle. You just have to touch it and um, it unlocks the door. And as we come to the back, what do we find? Well, pretty much the same, to be honest. It, um, it's, it's still really nice. It still looks really good and modern. Bear in mind, this is a 2015 car, so it's been about a few years now. There's been a few little updates and a few facelifts, but ultimately it's the same looking car as it's always been. So at the back, we see a little bit of carbon fiber trim here, a little spoiler. The only clue that this car is anything different to any other Model S is the, um, the badge down the corner. That P85D just gives you the, a clue that this is, this is a bit more special than your run of the mill Model S. And to get into the boot, well, it's as simple as, well, most cars really, above the number plate, there's a little button, push it, it's a power boot, it lifts up. And I've got to say, this boot is massive. There's loads of room in here. Uh, you're able to, uh, well, you would be able to pack easily for a holiday for four people, get all your cases in there and not have to worry at all. And to shut the boot, well, it's a simple button again up on the top and down it comes. Okay, so that's uh, enough for the outside of the car. I'm getting really cold. Let's get in the car and see what it's like to drive. 
So before we start having a bit of fun in this car, I think it's only right that I do a few miles just to get used to it. And that gives me an opportunity to tell you a little bit more about it. So 85 kilowatt hour battery, it drives two motors, front and rear. It's uh, got a top speed of 155 miles an hour and a naught to 60 in 3.1 seconds. Now inside this car, I've got to be honest, I have, uh, oh, well, I am very pleasantly surprised. I've driven other Model S's. Uh, the, the last one that I drove for uh, a period of time was a week, uh, and it was two years older than this. Now, it was very, very nice, but what I noticed was it was very noisy, and uh, you probably don't expect me to say that about an electric car, but it did have a lot of clatters and rattles and uh, whines and all sorts of things going on in it, which, which I didn't think was particularly good for a car that is you know, 100,000 pounds new, it should be the ultimate in luxury and it shouldn't have any of those rattles. Well, it did. Well, I'm pleased to say that this is a used car. It's done 30,000 miles and it's, it's so, so different. It's very laid back, quiet, refined, very, very nice in here. They've obviously worked on uh, the build quality and the materials used and the soundproofing. And from what I understand, the, the next model's on again, it's it's a step forward again so it just goes to show that they are really trying their best now to catch up with those legacy car makers and i would imagine the newest ones uh that are, i've been in them but i haven't driven one to be able to tell you 100 percent i would imagine they're a lot closer again now i've started to do a few more miles in this car what i can say is the um the steering also is that much better than the, the previous one i drove it's um it's light, but it's direct, and you do get some feeling back from it, which is exactly what you need. Handling-wise, it's, it's so much better. It really does feel like it's sticking to the road, and that's probably because of the, the, the way the aerodynamics sit the car down with the extra weight of the, the batteries and the motors in this car. It really does feel like it's sat right down on the road. Uh, and of course, you can make that even better again by adapting your suspension to how you want it. Now, I'm not saying this is gonna win it at many races around a track with some of our legacy car makers, but absolutely the handling is, is so, so much better than it ever was. And for somebody like me and for the general populace, you're not gonna find wanting in this. This thing's got all the grip you need and all the feedback you're gonna need uh, for a, a spirited drive, shall we say. One thing that's clear is coming into the town here, this car is definitely a head turner. People that know their cars know exactly what this car is about. And you can certainly see where I've just come from. There was a, a couple of groups of lads and they all stopped to look at it. But I'm gonna resist the urge to go and drive around the town waving the Royal Wave out the window to all the public um, and head off into the, uh, onto the A roads and the, uh, the dual carriageways just to get a, a, even more of a feel now for what this car's like. Because at the end of the day, this should be a driver's car with all the power and everything else that's in it. This really should be good fun to drive on the A roads. And straight away, you, know, you can feel that power. You can feel it wanting to go, wanting to, wanting to push you to license losing speeds. I've got to be honest. On the autobahn, I bet this is amazing, but um, here in the UK, you really have to watch your speed. And now we're on the dual carriageway, of course, I can try out that autopilot. So to use it, I'm told I need to look at the display, make sure that the speed and the steering wheel are there, and then pull it towards me twice. And then that's it. I've told it the speed I want to drive at. I've told it how far away I want it to be from the cars in front. And I can see where I am in the lane. And as long as I give it some input and you know, I am still in control of this car. It should, and it does, drive for you. Uh, now I'm coming up to a car in front and obviously it's going to match the speed of that car. So in order to get round that, all I do is hold my indicator on and it goes out to the, to lane two by itself. And now we just make our way past the car. How amazing is that? <laughs> I would imagine when you get used to it this is a really relaxing way of driving and you could do hundreds and hundreds of miles quite happily in here so now we're off that dual carriage where I'm going to take autopilot off it, it does work here as long as you've got good clear lines either side and a reasonable state of road it works really well if the lines aren't so clear I'm amazed that it does still work but you do really have to have your wits about you because every so often it will misread what's going on on the road and um it'll be throwing you into a hedge or into oncoming traffic, so just be wary. Now, in order to access this insane mode, you need to make sure the battery's up to temperature. So um, I've just played about with the settings, I've put it in insane mode, and I've told the battery to heat up. 
It's telling me it needs another 10 minutes to heat up. But I've got to be honest, as soon as I pushed that button, it was this was like some sort of starship starting to prepare for flight. The noises and stuff coming from underneath, uh, obviously that heating system is working overtime now to get this battery up to temperature to allow it to just push out as much power as possible to give me those, frankly insane, naught to 60 times. Now, if you were gonna buy this car secondhand, you'd probably be interested in the warranties that come with it. So this comes with an eight year, 125,000 mile battery warranty and a four year or 50,000 mile car warranty. Uh, I think the battery, we, we're happy now. The batteries are gonna last. We've got no concerns over the, them and that is reflected in the warranty. But the car itself, well, if I was buying this, I would want it to be in its warranty period. I think the cars from around about the era that this was built, there's still enough I'm seeing on social media and from owners that would concern me to own such an expensive car outside of its warranty period. That's not to say that uh, there aren't thousands of these out here that have never had a problem, but uh, it's still very new. I think if I was to buy a car that was built today, a Tesla that was built today in 2019, uh, when it was maybe three years old, I think I'd be an awful lot more confident about it. I think they, they really have ironed out a lot of the issues and I think the build quality is a lot better. But when we hear things about the handles going wrong quite often, that's not a cheap fix. I would want that done under my warranty. I've now slowed down and started going through a, a few villages and there's no doubt after the rain of this morning, the temperature's starting to warm up. And it's obviously warming up the cabin in here because where before everything was perfectly silent, I'm just starting to hear a few little creaks in here. And it's, it's the, it's the panel, it's the, um, the dashboard where it meets the pillar. And I can't quite work out exactly where it's coming from, but clearly it's two of the things just rubbing together ever so slightly. It's just one of those little things that you just think, oh, it doesn't need to do that. They should be able to overcome little things like that. Let's have a closer look at some of the actual features inside this car now that we're at a standstill. And um, well, the displays and everything in front of me, they are so clear, it's so easy to read. Uh, I particularly like this display cluster right in front of me. It gives me all the information I need. I can um, change it to how I want it to look, but ultimately it's really, really clear and really simple to read. The steering wheel, well, it's your kind of your bulk standard steering wheel. There's nothing actually particularly exciting about this steering wheel considering that this is a, um, a luxury car. One thing I really do like in this car is um, the, the rear view mirror. I know, strange thing to comment on. It's got no um, outer bezel to it so it just looks like a nice sleek piece of glass. I really like that. Although looking in it uh, out the back, rear visibility is a little bit limited. The head restraints at the back just make it, um, well they just obstruct your view a little bit. The rest of the dash in front of me, well, we've got this nice suede effect, some stitching. This is much more secure than uh, the last Model S that I drove, which was a couple of years older. It, um, it feels like it's been better put together. There's no doubt about it. It just feels a little bit more premium than it did before. Coming down into the, the center of the car here, this one's got this center section. So um, I know some have like a yacht floor, I think it's called. Uh, this one's got a, a section that can be covered up completely or, um, well, adapted to be used how you want to use it. So the front section is a lovely great big hole with a, a sliding cover on it, but it's also got these, these grips that you can adjust for the size of your water bottle or your coffee cup, or you can take them out altogether. Behind that, under this, this flap is, I suppose it's, it's like your, your media section, if you like. There's a place for your phone and there's, um, there's a, a charger. So the phone will actually just sit in there upright uh, and charge as, as you're driving along. Uh, there's a 12 volt plug, there's USB, uh, all the bits and pieces you need for connectivity, they're just in there. And then behind it, we've got this um, nice big armrest, which if you slide the top bits back, well, they've got another couple of cup holders. So plenty of cup holders, plenty of places to put bits and pieces. A nice nice amount of storage in here. The seats themselves, well, these are the generation two ones. They're, they're nice and comfortable. They're, they're, again, they're not exceptional, but there's nothing wrong with them. They're, they're heated as you would expect. Uh, they, they actually look, I think, really, really nice. Um, to sit in them, nice and comfy, nice and supportive. They're, they're all right seats. They're not bad at all. What does give you a nice sense of space in here are these lovely big windows we spoke about before. This is a sunroof, so it will go all the way back uh, and open everything up for you. What I am finding, although this, this material is really nice to touch, again, it's all sort of this suede material. Being dark, what it does is it kind of, it brings this front of the car down. Now, I've had to put the seat down as far as it will go. 
and I'm not a big person, just to try and alleviate some of that closeness that I feel from this because uh, being dark in colour, it really does feel like it's, it's coming down on top of your head. So to sit lower, to be able to take that out of my eye line, I found I had to do it to be able to relax in this car. All that brings us back round and I've been deliberately putting off talking about this because this screen, this is the centre of this car. This is the thing that everybody talks about. Everything is run from this screen in the middle. And to say it's a bit like a big iPad, I think that is probably the best description of it. It's so easy to use, so intuitive. When my kids have been in these cars, they're able to, within a couple of minutes, they're up and using them, no problem at all. So that's the front of this car. Let's jump in the back and see what it's like for a passenger. And back here, well, we find more of the same, to be honest. There's um, the same seats, the same feel, the same look. Uh, it's quite roomy, if I'm honest. Uh, what The big thing that strikes me, of course, is, uh, again, not having that drive tunnel in the middle. Nice flat floor. I can get my feet all the way across here. I can get nice and comfy. And the middle seat, well, that really is a seat. You could sit here as an adult quite happily. In fact, you've probably got a little bit more leg room there. Uh, this front seat is quite a long way back and tilted quite far back. That's on purpose, just so I could see right if, if, if somebody was quite big in the front and quite unsympathetic, yet yeah, it's not masses of room, but that's about as far back as it all goes. And it's, um, it's, it's still, you could sit there. Certainly a child would sit there quite happily. As an adult, well, uh, yeah, I've got a decent amount of leg room. I'm five foot nine, that's my driving position. Um, I'm confronted with uh, this kind of hard shell plastic vinyl -y thing in front of me. Uh, enough leg room there. Headroom, well, considering I'm not massive, it's getting quite close. My head is touching this sort of suede -y thing here. Uh, it's only that the roof has been popped up for the glass that my head isn't touching the roof, which is unusual for me in the back of a car. I'm normally okay. So if you were six foot or a, or a big person, the chances are you would probably find it a little bit tight in here for your head. Right, the battery's warm. I've found myself a safe bit of road. Let's try insane. So, foot on the brake hard, all the way down on the accelerator, foot off the brake, floor it. Holy mother! <laughs> 60! <laughs> oh my word! <laughs> Do you know, I've been in launch mode before as a passenger and I've driven EVs, all sorts of EVs, and um, done standing starts, but oh my God. <laughs> I don't know how to explain it. That is like being booted up the backside. Uh, there was no finesse about that. That was, you are just gonna get to 60 mile an hour as fast as you possibly can. But um, do you know what? Actually, thinking about it, now my brain's caught up. I'm very much a passenger in that, aren't I? Because I've just put my foot down and tried to hold it in a straight line. My head went back against the, um, the head restraint. I'll be honest, after that initial take off the line, my vision started to go a little bit. Yeah, you, you do, it's like that fight or flight. Your vision comes right in and you just, you're looking at the point you're going towards. I did very little there for the car. The car looked after me there. That, um, it was like it was saying, you know what, I've done this a thousand times. Just um, you sit back, enjoy the ride, let me deal with this. It was so easy just to go along for the ride. That's amazing. I don't know how many of those I could do in a day without going black and blue. That's what this car does to you. I almost feel like I could just um, leave it there because that smile, uh, that's what it invokes in you, a car like this. Now, I've got to be honest with you, when I arrived here at Just EVs today, and I picked up the keys to this car, I wasn't all that excited. I've driven Teslas before, they're nice cars, but I've got to be honest, over the last 12 months, that love of them has kind of ebbed away. And I think there's a number of reasons for that. Uh, first and foremost, there's been um, so many issues around build qualities, things that I've experienced personally and I've seen other people mention. And, and secondly, a lot of those legacy car makers are now making these brilliant EVs. The I-Pace, the Jaguar I-Pace, I absolutely loved. I thought that was, to me, the, the new pinnacle of electric vehicles. But it's not always about black and white, is it? That for for a lot of people, a car is about A to B, getting from A to B, uh, and they're not really worried about what it does as long as it does it relatively efficiently. Well, for a lot of us, 
for millions of us, car enthusiasts, it's about the passion that it invokes inside you. It's about having that grin on your face every time you drive it. It's about getting up in the morning and seeing it on your driveway and not being able to wait to get your breakfast down your neck so you can get out and drive it to work. That's what owning a car is about. That's what we as enthusiasts want from a car. And that's what this car gives you. It, it isn't perfect, of course it's not perfect. Do you know what, this, this car, this reminds me of a, uh, an American foreign exchange student that came to visit us when, we, when I was at college. Uh, there was a group of them came over and there was one lad in particular, I'll never forget him, his name was Troy. He was like the all American dream boy. We all wanted to be his mate because he was, he was funny, quick witted, good looking, good at sports. Anything he turned his hand to, he was brilliant at and he was great fun to be around. But as the week evolved, we actually saw Troy for what he really was. And he was, well, he liked to smoke a bit of pot. We weren't into all that sort of thing. He had a bit of an anger issue, which was interesting at times. But with all that in mind, we still wanted to be his mate. We still wanted to hang out with him. Every day we were looking forward to what new adventures we were gonna get into with him because it just never stopped. He was great fun to be around and we all wanted to be his friend. This Tesla, this Model S, this is Troy. This is exactly what I feel with this car. My excitement around Tesla has been reignited because it's not just about those black and white things about um, is, do I need a warranty and our bit's gonna fall off. Of course that's important, but it's all about the driving experience. It's about the owning experience as a whole. Now I'm not saying I would necessarily go out and buy one of these without a, a warranty on it because it's a lot of money and I can't afford that kind of money. and I can't afford for a car like that to go wrong for me. Uh, but put that money aside, what you get is, what do you know, you get a new car every year, don't you? Probably less than that, maybe even every six months. Every time they update that software, you're getting a new car. For me, the highlight of this car, well, it was that autopilot. I've, uh, it's not the, the full version nine, but it's not far off of it. This car, it really can, in the right conditions, um, I won't wanna drive it on the country lanes in it, but in the right conditions, it really can drive itself. And you need to do very little to enable it to do so. And that whole central system, that whole command system on that big screen, I, I think that is the way to go. I really like it. I, I know I've said before, it's not everybody's cup of tea, but for me, being a, a kind of somebody who loves technology, that just finishes off uh, the car for me. So that's it, the Model S P85D. A big thank you to Just EVs for letting me borrow it for the day. Uh, without them, a lot of these reviews I've done recently wouldn't be possible. So um, thank you ever so much to them. Uh, go and have a look at their website. I'll put a link in the description below. And before I get too wet out here, I'm gonna say goodbye. Thanks ever so much for watching. Me and Troy, we're gonna go and have some fun. Uh, all the best, see you soon, take care.